Good afternoon. I'm Erica Gonzalez with breaking news. Georgetown University making the announcement of its new men's Today head basketball we are sure in a coach. New era of Georgetown men's basketball. That would be Ed Cooley from I am Providence excited University. Excited to welcome Ed Cooley and his family to the Hilltop. Coach Cooley comes to us with not only an incredible wealth of basketball knowledge, but as a leader, a teacher, and a mentor. He has a proven record of success, and we are ecstatic that he now wears the blue and gray. I'd like to now welcome President DeJoya for his comments. Well, thanks very much, Lee. Good afternoon and welcome, everyone. It's great to be here with all of you. And as, as Lee has just shared, this, this afternoon we have the privilege of formally welcoming our new head men's basketball coach to Georgetown, Ed Cooley. And we are excited about the future of Georgetown basketball under Coach Cooley's leadership. The 2022 Naismith Men's Coach of the Year, Ed brings 17 years of experience as a head coach and a deep commitment to excellence. Ed's a builder, he builds teams, he builds community, he understands what it means for a team to be successful on the court, and most importantly, the role that athletics can play in the formation of the young men on his team. Ed has seen great success as a coach, seven NCAA tournament appearances in the past nine tournaments, a Big East tournament title in 2014, and last year he led Providence to their first Big East regular season title in a tri trip to the Sweet 16. He has demonstrated his ability to navigate the changing dynamics within college basketball and remain focused on the development of his team as students and as athletes. This is an important moment for our community and for Georgetown basketball, a new chapter. We believe his vision, determination, and experience will uplift and restore this team and enable Georgetown basketball to compete at the highest levels. We have great confidence in Ed and in the potential for our program in the years ahead. Ed, we've been grateful to count on you and Nuris and your family, Olivia and Isaiah, as members of this community. And it's a tremendous privilege now to welcome you as our head men's basketball coach and to see all that you will enable our team to accomplish in the years ahead. As I welcome Lee Reed back to the podium, I'd like to express my deep gratitude to him for his leadership of our athletics program, for his contributions as we take this next step for Georgetown basketball. Lee? Thank you, President DeJoya. Again, I'd like to welcome Coach Cooley, Norris, Isaiah, and Olivia to the Hoya family. We're delighted to have you here. As we began this process, Coach Cooley quickly emerged as our leading candidate. We knew we needed a leader, someone who understood our identity and could reimagine Georgetown basketball to fit today's unique basketball landscape. Coach Cooley has a vision for our program on the court, in the classroom, and in the community. He also possesses the ability to set standards for these young men, guided by our Jesuit values. I am certain he will quickly ingrain himself into the Georgetown community, showing his passion, he has a lot of that, drive and determination to build a championship level program. I am deeply appreciative to the many people who assisted us in this process. First and foremost, to our current men's basketball student athletes. We appreciate you entrusting us with such a monumental task in your basketball careers. To President DeJoya, University Administration, Board of Directors, Turnkey, and our athletic staff, thank you for your partnership during this process, for your commitment to Georgetown basketball, and to helping us revitalize this proud, tradition-rich program. And finally, to our fans, our students, our alumni, our band, our cheerleaders, Hoya Blue, and the Hoya Hoop Club, and all of Hoya Nation, thank you for your continued support. Make no mistake, we will forever respect our history, but Coach Cooley is a major step toward our future. 
I am confident that with his drive and vision, we will recapture the excitement and success that this community deserves. I'd like to formally welcome new head men's basketball coach for the Georgetown Hoyas, Ed Cooley. amazing to be here and I appreciate it. If we have any of our former players that are here, we wouldn't be here without you. So if any of our former players here, somebody could just make an aisle for them to come right here because we ain't here without you. If, I, if any of the former players are here, please. they've earned the right to stand right here. This has been an incredible journey so far. And Jack, Lee, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come be with my daughter, <laughs> who, is a, who is a Hoya, right? Sharon, uh, you know, she's here. And one of, my, one of my favorite people that I met at Georgetown through our meetings down in Ponte Vedra. I want to welcome my wife. I want to welcome my son, Valentina. Ivan Thomas, who's here, Dennis Coleman of Ropes and Gray, who's the best attorney in America, so I appreciate he and his wife. It's just an incredible feeling and a lot of emotion right now. And I'm not good from speaking off of cards, but there's so many things that I have to remember. And there's so many things that I was thinking about on the flight coming in today. And for me, this is about people. This is about purpose. This is about friendships. And as I look around here, I see some of my friends from college. I see coaches that were at other schools, neighbors, relationships that go beyond the game of basketball. And that's what we want to try to do here. We're going to win games. I promise you we're going to win games. We're not going to win a little. We're going to win a lot. <laughs> you understand that? The reason you bring these players up here is because this is a player's game. And when I had the opportunity to get into coaching some years ago as a Division III volunteer coach, and then going to Stonehill College Division II coach, it was all about the players. In those volunteer days, those Division II days, the restricted earning days at the University of Rhode Island, to Boston College, the other Jesuit school, to the other Jesuit school that's called Fairfield, I couldn't be here at this podium today without players because you're not at this podium if you're not successful. You're not at this po a podium if you didn't have players that you loved, mentored, and guided. So this, to the players that we left at Providence College, it was going to take a very, very special place for me to leave home. Home. And it is hard. Yet, purpose, change, time, purpose. There's a purpose for us to be here. It's the right time. And it was hard. I tell you, it was hard. 12 years at a school where you grew up, 12 years at a, at a place that you took from the bottom, 12 years to build a championship top 20 program year in and year out. And I owe it to all the former players, the GAs, the coaches, the administrators, Ken Sicard and Steve Napolillo, who was the athletic director there, Ken Sicard, who was the president that was one of the hardest conversations I have had to talk about, talking about leaving to go to an interconference team. So if any of you can just sit in my skin for 48 hours and know how hard that was, it had to take a really special place. But they brought me to my baby. They had no idea that was the key. <laughs> that was the key to this whole deal. 
So to see Olivia smiling and she's going to graduate in May, and I don't, I didn't even write that down. All right. But this is a new era. This is. This is an era where this district, this DMV area, I promise you, we need to lock this down. We need to make sure. We need to make sure. Not the best players, the best people that are good players, that have incredible integrity, that have character, that have passion, that have a chip on their shoulder to want to be a champion. Listen, I'm a dreamer and a believer, right? Everybody looks at you, coach. No, my name's Ed. I just happen to be a coach. But the Ed in me wants to be a champion. And I think we chose together as a partnership a championship level program. I remember going back to 1982, 83, 84, 85, Dick Emberg, Joe McGuire, they would be on television, St. John's would be playing Georgetown, and I saw this imposing figure. Man, respect and tradition and legacy is something that I dreamed about. And I had an opportunity to meet Coach Thompson. Practiced at Central High School, I couldn't believe he allowed me to sit and practice. And his language was colorful. <laughs> I was in awe seeing size, length, strength, athleticism. Why do I bring up Coach Thompson, Coach Raveling, Coach Cheney? They were black coaches that we in the inner city, that was our hope, that was our dream. I said one day, man, I want to be like that dude. I don't know if I can use that vocabulary, but I can. <laughs> I want to be that dude. Lo and behold, you fast forward, and I remember, and you was in the game, Jeff, when we played Fairfield. Played Fairfield. He was really good that game, too. <laughs> and I remember Coach Thompson, we played here, that is now Capital One Arena. And he said, you won't be there long, boy. I'm like, okay. What job am I getting? Because I got a good one right here. I bring up Coach Thompson's name. First and foremost, I'm not him. I don't want to be him. But I respect the platform he gave all of us young believers that had a bowl of hope, a bowl of hope and a dream. And that's all I wanted. Opportunity knocks, and when opportunity knocks, don't ask who's at the door. Opportunity's there. Break it down and become special. And that's what we're going to be here. We're not going to be good. We're going to be special. And that specialty is going to come from our alumni, our fan base, our season ticket holders, our former players, which I'm really, really big on, a lot of the times, coaches take jobs and they forget about the young men that got them there. There's a history here. There's a tradition here that I think you have to respect. But it is a new era. And it's the blossom season. We're about to blossom as big as anything in America. I can promise you that. And it's not going to be easy. We are, we are navigating uh, ever-moving landscape in college athletics. And we're not going to complain about it. We're going to adjust, we're going to adapt, and we're going to become champions because I think it's important for us to understand that. As I'm looking down this year, and I can't see because I don't have glasses on and I'm blind as hell, <laughs> the commitment to excellence is just not on the court. It's in the classroom. And for all of you, get ready. I'm super inclusive. I want to meet you. I want to know your name. I want to know your neighbor's name. I want to be in the cafeteria. I want you to come to a practice. I want you to see and evolve with us from day one because we can't do it alone. We need Capital One Arena to become the spot, not just an arena, the spot. So we need every student, every alumni, every former player, every business. I promise you, people are going to want to wear this G more than they've ever wanted to wear it in their life. We're going to make this G special once again. We'll respect legacy. We'll respect tradition. But, man, as you can feel from the passion that's running through my veins right now, I feel like playing right now. I feel like going out and recruit right now. I feel like asking people for money right now. <laughs> right? We want to create a culture that is just not inclusive, but when people look at us, they envy us because we have pride. We have integrity. We do things the right way. We say please. We say thank you. We have an attitude of gratitude, appreciation, and that goes a long way. I need people to see our student athletes, not as players, but as people that they say, damn, I can hire that man. How we walk, how we talk, how we engage. 
open doors for people. That to me is just civility. And anytime you have that, people want to come see you. We talk about the spot. That's what we have to make our building. And we need everybody in here to give us a chance. And the word patience is always hard because everybody wants it and they want it right now. In this world of, I don't know, social media, Facebook, fat book, I don't know what the hell it's called. <laughs> everybody wants it right now. Have a little bit of patience, right? Rome wasn't built in a day, as we always say, but it was built. It was a little bit at a time, a little bit of luck, a couple of great players. You guys got any kids? <laughs> Are they good? Getting there. Yep. His kid ain't good. <laughs> This kid ain't good. <laughs> when we build this identity, this identity will be about all of us, not just the basketball team. An identity and a culture of appreciation and gratitude and that ethos that I truly, truly believe in. Relationships that are deeper than the game. So when people see you, they don't see Coach Cooley, they see Ed. Coach is just my job that many people think they can do that many people have opinions on. When you're not in the grind, in the recruiting, the parenting, the mentoring, that's what we do. Our staff will be a staff that develop men of high character. And for those that need some help, a second, a third chance. You can't just kick those kids away because that kid was me. That kid was many of us that didn't have much, but we had that bowl of hope. And the acronym for HOPE is helping other people excel. Make it about the other person, never about yourself. When you do that, your life is fulfilled. So we talk to our players about it's not about you. The world of me ends in losses. The world of we create championships. The world of us creates an incredible opportunity of dreaming big and dreaming to do things at a high, high level. I'm so excited to be here. I'm telling you, this place is special. It has an it factor. And everybody says, what is it? Don't know, but it's here. <laughs> and you can feel it in the room. You can smell it in the room. You can touch it in the room. We have an opportunity to make this Hoya Nation special. And we want to put our handprints all over it, not just in the basketball court, but in an entire district, an entire DMV area. So we want high school coaches, AAU coaches, believers, and people to give us a chance to coach their kids. And you don't have to be the best player. You have to be a good person. If you happen to be a good player, we want you. But we will not not go see you because you can't play for us. You may be able to play for somebody that we met. It could be a Division II school, a Division III school, an NIA school, a junior college. We've got to continue to promote education. This is the third Jesuit school I've worked at. 27 of my 29 years in college coaching has been at a Catholic institution. So I get it. I'm, I may be from the north and talk funny, but we're going to work our ass off. <laughs> Nobody will outwork this group. Nobody. There won't be one staff in a country that will outwork the staff that's about to arrive on the hill. I can tell you that. If they do, we'll have new staff members. <laughs> we need energy. That's the truth. We need energy, passion, enthusiasm, and remember, we are inclusive. If you see me on campus, introduce yourself, right? Don't be afraid. Grow up. Say hello. No, grow up, because you're going to have to go get a job, just like I just did with my new bosses. Hey, Lee, Ed Cooley, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> You'll be amazed when they see you, the person, how powerful that is, when they see you, the people. And as we close this up, and I see many of my family members here, many of my friends, the media people that are here, we need each and every one of you to trust. We need each and every one of you to believe. We need each and every one of you not to be negative about what happened yesterday. That's in the past. What are we today? Where are we going tomorrow? And I need you to envision, from our former players to our current players to our future players, having a net around our neck. Here in that one shining moment, Jim Nance ain't going to be there anymore as he's retiring this year. He was one of the best guys you can ever be around. But Ian Eagle's going to be talking to me at some point 
really, really soon when Georgetown wins a national championship. I can really believe that. I'd be remiss if we didn't wish our brethren in the Big East luck as three teams are in the Sweet 16, Xavier, Creighton, and UConn. Can't believe I'm saying that, but I'm saying it. <laughs> hey, we got to be good teammates, right? They're part of the Big East family. We got to wish them luck because when they win, we win, right? And I'm hoping on this day next year, somebody else is wishing the Hoyers good luck in the round of 16, to the Elite Eight, to the Final Four, to the semifinal, to a championship opportunity. Just give us an opportunity. That's all we're looking for. I appreciate everybody for coming today. God bless each and every one of you, and go Hoyas.